Hey guys, and welcome back to Jay's Retro Reactions. Hey everybody, I hope you're all doing well. Today we're going to be watching Season 2, Episode 2 of Mr. In Between, and I cannot wait. We have Ray, the hitman with a heart and the hitman with a conscience. He looks after his brother with motor neuron disease. He looks out for his daughter from his separated wife who's been bullied and he's going to sort that out for her. And he's a very kind and caring dad. He has a great relationship with Ali who he seems to care about deeply. He loves his best friend Gary, but yet when it comes to killing people, not a bat of an eyelid does he show. He can do it cold and clinical, Mr. Sociopath. And that's why he is Mr. In-Between, stuck between this family world, this caring world, and this criminal underworld. I'm really, really enjoying this series. I have seen it before, as I said, when it first came out, so it's a few years ago, and I've forgotten way more than I thought I would have. Because the episodes are quite short, and they're quite snappy, but I'm really, really enjoying getting back into this series, and reliving the comedy of Gary and Ray as they journey through this criminal underworld. And I'm really looking forward to continuing this series. So as I always say, enough of me talking. Let's get on with the show. Welcome to my party. We're just getting started. A life is a dream or a nightmare story. Hello? Uh, my daughter Brittany goes to school with your daughter Taylor. He's going to sort out Brittany's bullying problem, he's going to the Mama Taylor. Good looking mother in fairness to her. Taylor's been bullying my daughter, saying stuff to her, putting stuff up on the internet. My daughter wouldn't stuff. do that, so. Why do parents always say that their kid wouldn't do that? Look, if someone's come to your door, they've done it, right? End of. Look, love, I'm not here to cause problems. I'm Don't call me love, mate. Okay. Alright. Alright, she's up her own arse, this one. Do you think you scare me or something coming around here? I'm not trying to scare you. He should scare you, missus, <laughs> if you knew who he was. I'm going to go inside now, and I'm going to call my brother. Mm. Oh, your brother. I'm going to shit myself. You going to go now? Don't be a dickhead. <laughs> Don't be a dickhead. Stop being a wench then, missus. I really, really, and I know I've said this before, but I have to highly commend the actor who plays Bruce. Such a difficult role to play if you don't suffer from that condition. Ah, <laughs> oh, shit, man. He's after falling and getting jammed between the toilet and the wall. <laughs> Is Freddy doing his best impression of a mafia godfather singing Italian opera in the shower? Give me five minutes! Why is there a see-through shower in the middle of the strip club in the first place? That's just wrong, man. You want coffee? I can't drink caffeine anymore. Why not? Makes me sweat too much. Never heard that one before. I did try decaf for a while, but yeah, it doesn't taste the same. I couldn't stick it. But I, did, I used to be drinking a lot of coffee, seven, eight cups a day, and I couldn't sleep, so cut it down to three. You counting it? Could have missed counting. Yeah, yeah, could have. I actually like how Ray's counting the money in front of Freddy. To me, that's an intimidation trick. It's a psychological trick. He's going, you remember who's the real boss here. You might be the boss on paper, but I could take you out any time. So this guy wants to talk to you about a piece of work. Mm. It's all very hush-hush. Do you want to meet with him? Set it up. Yeah. Okay, Freddy has another job for Ray. Let's find out what's going to happen to him in this job. Something weird or strange always happens or goes wrong in these jobs for him. So in addition, I suppose, to Freddy getting Ray to do hits for him and his business, he's also like the controller for Ray's hitman career in general. He's agent. He's hitman agent. Probably takes a commission of every job he sources for him. Hey, yeah. Alex. Ray, good to meet you. Nice to meet you, Ray. This is Kev. Kev, how are you, mate? Yeah. These look like bikers. Heard of a guy called Vinnie Williams? You know him? Yeah, I met him once or twice. Still interested? It's gonna cost you. See, Ray doesn't care. He's sociopathic if he knows the person. He knows this guy they're asking him to whack and he doesn't care as long as the money's right. Ken, you wouldn't be a hitman if you didn't have that about you, I suppose. What do you want him whacked? Does it matter? Yeah. I'm his VP. Okay, so the VP of the motorcycle club wants the president gone so he could take over. How much? 250. Done. 250k, quarter of a mil, just like that, no problem. <laughs> You cancel a job, I keep the cash, okay? Of course. 
No honor among criminals. That's why he's asking for the down payment. Brucey! Bruce! In the dungeon! Shit, how long has Bruce been stuck there? Shit, mate, what happened? I just thought I'd have a lie down. <laughs> At least he has a sense of humor about it. It's all you can do, I suppose, in that situation. Uh, okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna pull you up. Uh, watch your head. I wonder, does Bruce know what Ray does? And before he got sick, was he involved at Ray's business? You have to get your care. I'm not having a fucking care. Fair enough. Bruce has still got his pride. That will, I suppose, the disease will knock that out of him eventually. He does not need a carer if he's falling and can't get up. Where would mate? I want to live here. I know you want to live here, mate, but you can't live here anymore. I'll put you in the garage. That's a good suggestion by Ray, because Bruce won't take a carer, his pride. So by asking Bruce to move in with him like a flatmate into his garage, he's making it easier for Bruce to accept that he needs that help. Now, I don't think there was anyone on the grass. No, behind the fence. I think the shooter was in the gold. We're talking about the JFK assassination. Great. And there's, two, and there's a photo. There's two blokes that are hiding in the pergola, and I reckon that's where the headshots come from. There's so many conspiracy theories around the JFK assassination, it's hard to keep track of them all, to be honest. Yeah, it's just, it just doesn't make any sense. F***ing bullshit. Two women are bored out of their arses with this conversation. You okay, babe? I want to go home. Hey, what made you, you, why did you shave it off? Your beard. Could the women look any more bored? Take the hint, guys. Have you told Ali about you know what? What? Your pee, -pee movies. She's bringing up the Golden Shares DVD that Ray took the fall for on behalf of Gary. Oh, <laughs> what the fuck's going on? Hey, nothing. Time and a place. Nothing. Nothing's going nothing. on. Oh, come on, Gary. This could fuck up his relationship with Ali. <laughs> Last year, Ray left a DVD at our house, and I found it. And you won't let it go. Ow, oh, Gary. What? Golden Shower Power. Golden shower of power. Nice. This is like a whole side of you that I have never seen before. <laughs> There's a lot you don't know. I know. Fair play to Ray. He's still keeping this whole charade going and protecting Gary's mate. No way I would in that situation. I'll be going, this is enough. It was him. Leave me out with this. I need to go to the toilet now. So do you want me to wait? I was going to go, but do you want me to wait till we get home or? Yeah, yeah, yeah be good. Fair play to Ali. She's rolling with the punches, man. She's a keeper. You guys have got to sort it out. <laughs> right. right, you want another drink? I want to go home. Tatiana or Tanya, whatever her name is, seems a bit of a wench, to be honest. It was his DVD, right? She found it, and he tells her, he tells her, it's Ray's. Is Ali going to believe this? Because I don't think most women would. They'd think you were just trying to cover your arse after being exposed. But why the f*** would I bring a porno into you? Like, who comes around to somebody's house and you bring a porno with you? <laughs> Exactly, it's hardly a housewarming gift, is it? You know what I mean? And then you leave it, and you, you know what I mean? And you go. Oh, no, it doesn't make any f***ing sense. No. The only time that would have been appropriate is probably when you're a very young teenage boy with a load of young teenage boy mates. This is pre-internet days where you couldn't find stuff, and if you wanted to see stuff and someone had a porn tape or found one or found one in their dad's closet or whatever, they might bring it around to the group and say, come on, let's get together and watch that. That's the only time I can think that would be acceptable to bring a porn DVD to someone's house or videotape, depending on how old you are. Dad, why don't you like sandwiches? Who is it, the mother of the other girl? We're looking for a Ray Shoesmith. Does he live here? I uh, answer questions. Okay, is there somebody here who can answer questions? These poor cops are going to get seriously frustrated here, but there's nothing they can do. They have to charge him or he doesn't have to say anything. End of. We just spoke to a woman by the name of Petra Jenkins. She says you threatened her and tried to menace her. Did she? Yeah. Oh, what a wench that woman was. Would you mind telling us why? I don't answer questions. Okay. Get the hint, cops. Friendly chat. It's just weird. Not just weird, Ray's probably experienced. I'd say given his lifestyle, he's probably done prison a couple of times as well and has had a few interrogations in the past, so he knows how to handle himself in these situations. Something happened to me, like if I was in I know, like an accident or something and I was in a wheelchair, did you look after me? I hate these questions, but I've been around long enough to know that's what a woman is sussing out if you're a suitable long-term partner, potentially marriage down the road. So depending on how Ray feels, 
should guide how he answers this. If he wants red, he should say no way. If he wants to keep her, he should say definitely. I'd probably put a pillow over your head and put you out of misery. I think Ray probably would do that too. Yeah, we could still have sex though, right? So you'd still want to have sex with me even if I couldn't feel anything? Well, wouldn't I want to have sex with you? <laughs> Typical male response. The main concern he has is how they're going to continue to have sex even if she's crippled. Sure. <laughs> Knock yourself out. <laughs> Just don't complain, I'm a dead root. But you're a dead root anyway and I don't complain. Oh, nice one, Ray. What are you doing? You'll see. Again, root being the word for... Australian word for sex, if I understand it correctly. Not a term we use over here. Oh, is it for me? No, it's for the dude in the park bench over there. Ali likes Ray a lot. She's carving hearts and trees, man. Real teenage stuff. Puppy love. Yeah, well, I said I'd look after you. Well, good. Just want to make sure we're going to have sex. At <laughs> <laughs> Very important from the male point of view. Ladies need to understand this. <laughs> Fair play to Ray, he's gone back to the gym. He got over his embarrassment from being choked out by the young girl who's back as well. I've heard that you've been bullying my friend Brittany. You bother Brittany again, and I'm gonna rip your head off. Good man, Ray. Because the cops were sniffing around him, he got the young girl to go and threaten Taylor to get her off Brit's back. Well done. Smart. I'm holding still enough for you? Yes. Yeah, alright. Okay, you want to see? Yes. Right, Ali's a keeper. She even gets on with your daughter. Yeah, she's alright now. She's pretty upset, but I don't think she's gonna have any more problems. Well, not after that boxing MMA girl spoke to her. Unless she's stupid. Are you bullied at school? Mm-hmm. Why did it stop? Fought back. I said that in the last episode. That's what you have to do if you're being bullied. Even if you lose, it doesn't matter. Just hurt them every time they come near you. They will leave you alone eventually, trust me. It's not worth it. They'll just find someone else to pick on. Grabbed him and threw him up against a wall and just beat the absolute f*** out of him. It's always better to give than receive. 100%. I have to agree. Well, you got to fight back, you know. Otherwise... Otherwise what? Otherwise people will walk all over you. It's not just people that will walk all over you. It's life. Life has a tendency to give you knockdown blows every now and again. And you have to have that will to get up and keep fighting. Keep going. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, you know, I'm going to top myself, you know. I've had enough. Because I was getting hit at home, I was getting hit at school, you know. This scene is really powerful. It's given a bit of an insight into how Ray is the way he is. He was a physically abused kid at home by his father, probably. He was beaten up at school. He had no safe place, no sanctuary as a kid. He was on the verge of killing himself. And the only way he, fa he couldn't do it, and the only way he found out of it was to fight back hard. And to develop that kind of wall that he's that sociopathic wall that he has because he obviously felt back then if he was on the verge of suicide yeah and by developing that wall and that insensitivity to hurting others so that they would leave him alone it's turned him into the character he is today very insightful anyway hey guys welcome back that was the end of Season 2, Episode 2. A really enjoyable episode, even if it was a bit slower paced than the previous episodes we've watched. What I loved about that episode, which I spoke about just a moment ago, was the psychological insight we got into how Ray is the character he is today. That abused kid, that bullied kid, that suicidal kid who learned how to fight back and learned not to give a damn when hurting others because it was better that they were hurt than he was hurt. Fascinating insight into how he became this Mr. In-Between who can feel when he's in his normal life and is quite caring and who can shut down those feelings and become very sociopathic when he's in his professional or criminal life. So I really like that powerful writing as well. Credit to Scott Ryan, the guy who plays Ray, who's also the writer of this show. And credit to the director again, Nash Edgerton, who did a wonderful job of interspersing the various elements we've seen in the show and, and blending that mix of tragedy and comedy that we get often in Mr. In Between. Because that's a very difficult balancing act to pull off correctly. Because you go too much in the comedy, it takes away from the tragedy. You go too much in the tragedy, it takes away from the comedy. 
and I like that kind of whiplash that you get between both. So we went from laughing at Ray and Tanya or Tatiana, whatever the hell her name is, talking about the Golden Showers DVD coming up again from episode one, season one, and Ali finding out about it and him having to explain it and all of that afterwards and still saying nothing to, to Gary about it, taking the hit again, to that emotional, heartbreaking scene where Ray is spilling his guts to Ali about what happened to him. And again, we see the realness of the kind of relationship between Ali and Ray, whereas they get more and more comfortable, he's able to open up more and more to her about who he is, which is a very complicated person. And we also see typical female concerns being addressed through Ali asking Ray, you know, the kind of long-term questions she has is if he's a suitable partner, as I said, for marriage about would he look after her if she became disabled, etc. We also, as I said, seen Ray sort out the bully of Brit and making sure and being clever enough and smart enough because the bully's mother called the cops. He was clever enough and smart enough to get the girl who whacked him to basically sort out that problem for him. We also see Freddie lining up a new job for Ray, which is to kill this president of the motorcycle club, but we didn't see any further development of that story. So I presume that may be the theme of season two. And if I remember from those years ago, I watched it. I think it is. That's going to be one of the main storylines or story arcs through season two. But yeah, very enjoyable episode. Not so much on the comedy side this time, not so much on the crime side, more on the emotional side and more understanding who Ray is, which is important. For me anyway, it's always important that I understand the motivation of characters and why they are the way they are. I think a good series or a good novel, it doesn't matter, does that for you. You have a picture of a person, but that picture is not complete until you have the jigsaw of the past filled in so that you understand their psychological profile and their motivations for being the way they are today whether those are positive or negative motivations but enough of me ranting and raving guys you're probably sick of it all i ask is please hit the like subscribe and share button on this video over 97 percent of my viewers are not subscribed come on lads it's free just hit the subscribe button hit the like button hit the share button please do it for your least favorite youtuber I need more views. <laughs> That's enough of the begging out anyway. Also, if you're interested in the full uncut, unedited, uninterrupted by comments commentary, because what I do there is I pause between comments, you can check out my full length reactions on Patreon. Link below in the video description, guys. Anyways, in the, that's enough for me. I'll see you again for season two, episode three and four. In the meantime, take care of yourselves, take care of your families. God bless and bye for now.